he can go and um, have a little fun here. Big week for uh, stuff, so good time to have a show. Uh, let's I see. need show notes. That's oh, I'm yeah, you should get in there. There's things in there. I'm, I'm getting in there. Uh, if you want, you don't have to. You can do whatever. You can be you. Getting in there. Um, all right. I'm going to kick it off. Skick it off. <laughs> skick it off. Skick it off and uh, see how this goes. Let's get to skicking. I'm skicking straight, straight up skicking, yo. Uh, begins in. Wait, is that recording? Hold on. Yeah, I see stuff. And video's good. Chat room's good. Everyone's good. All right, here we go. Begins in three, two, one. I'm Ghost Crawler. I am totally off the leash, and you were listening to the instance. <laughs> The World of Warcraft podcast, so you don't have to. This is the instance. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the instance, episode 546 for January 25th, 2019. I'm Scott Johnson. Joined today. By the illustrious uh, Garrett Weinzerpel, all the way from Florida. What's going on, Garrett? Oh, you know, Scott. Just uh, I, I told Kyle last night because I'm, I'm going to Disney later. I have I have Disney itis. Yeah, it, it's that feeling you get when you know you're about to go to Disney, and uh, you're just like, yeah, man, everything's cool. It's a good feeling, wanna... then. You're saying it feels good. Yeah, because Disney itis doesn't seem like something you want to get, but apparently <laughs> it's quite the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Disney itis, Patrick. Catch it. Yeah, catch it. It's the All hot. Right, it's the hot it. new wave of the future. Like senior itis, but you're about to go to Disney as opposed to you're about to be done with school. Yeah, I, I totally get that. You're getting trunky, is what you're saying. I, that's a phrase we used to use. We wanted to get out of school. Trunky? We were feeling trunky. Yeah, and it meant your the the idea was that your trunk was packed and you're ready to go, and it's just a matter of time before you go, and you just you're okay. Trunky. Gotcha. I yeah. thought you were okay. I was I was like, is it a play on truancy? No, like you feel no. like being late? No. no, no. <laughs> No, you're close, but no cigar. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's exciting. When you go, make sure you you know enjoy the the thrills of Disney World. It's for your birthday, right? We should mention that, right? Ooh, happy! Right, it uh, was it yesterday, is. wasn't it? Yesterday, no, no, it's 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 today. Oh, it's today! It's happy today. birthday! I knew it's, that. It's today. Woo-hoo. Yeah, yeah, I knew yeah. that. Congratulations as you f- venture further into your thirties. Yes, further into my thirties, mm. where when you spend twenty minutes in an attic, you Pay for it for three days after. Yeah. Hey, Patrick, do you remember those? The 30s? Do you remember those? Those were good. Oh, the sweet days of the 30s. Yeah. How far away they are now and how I miss them. I miss them terribly. <laughs> we used to think, I remember thinking they were, that meant you were old. And now that I'm in my late 40s, I look back and go, nope, I was wrong I mean, as rain. I should have been happier there. That was a great time to be in your 30s. I, th- I think it was we're BlizzCon. Soon- Go ahead. It's, I was going to say, I think, I think it was BlizzCon 2017 where I found out how old you are, Patrick, and I still don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know before? Yeah. No, I didn't. I assumed, oh, I don't wow. know, for some reason, I just assumed you were you were. So wait, make, make me feel better a little bit. Uh, how old did you think I was? I thought you were like I'm hoping it's good. Yeah. Uh, I, I oh, you were nice. Like mid, mid to late 30s. Yeah, I thought not... you were like just, just, maybe, just maybe knocking on the door of 40. Oh, he wishes. Nice. He oh yeah, yeah, wishes. I do wish. But uh, so, so you know, I don't know if this is any. You know, we shouldn't talk about this on the show because it has nothing to do with Blizzard. But um, <laughs> you're gonna I, do it anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyway, very, very quickly. Uh, I forgot what I wanted to say. So there you go. That's that's <laughs> oh wonderful. You know, there. Um, it was about age. It yeah. was something about how getting I, old. How ironic. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know. Oh, okay. Like, 30, getting to 30 is completely fine. I didn't mind at all. 40, it was like, yeah, whatever. Mm. Getting to 50, because I'm 45 for the people who don't know. Yeah. Um, getting to 50 is weird it is weird because like 50 is really it's really old like you're wearing old people's <laughs> glasses you're i don't know 50 is weird 50 is weird but don't forget 50 today you'd be dead already if this is the 1800s we'd be dead in fact in fact <laughs> uh, garrett would be close to dead because nobody lived past like 
35 was like the cap, man. Everybody was getting diphtheria and freaking weird warts and stuff and just dying left and right. And you'd have 20 kids, so you'd have enough to run the farm. Like, that's just how it was. Today, we live like 80-something, so we're good. We're only halfway. It's fine. Patrick, we're- my My hope is that we live long enough that cloning gets to the point that after the three of us are gone... Uh, in like uh, you know, the year two thousand one hundred and seventy-five, right. our clones are still doing this show. Yeah, good point. Our our <laughs> our, our, our reserved consciousnesses will be uh, functioning I mean, in some giant server. I, I'd be I'd be up for it for mostly, but I think we'd need some kind of uh, uh, common decision and consensus to to clone Scott. Yeah. I feel like this is. This is not something we are certain we want to unleash upon the world. No, don't enter this I'm lightly, just, for sure. I, I guarantee yeah. that's something you don't want to just jump into. But I was thinking the other day, and then we'll get off this horrible subject of age. Um, <laughs> and we're all doing it, by the way. I don't know if any... Like, if you're 18 and you're thinking, yeah, you guys are old, you're aging at the same rate we are. You just don't know it yet. So you'll either get there or you'll <laughs> die young. Which, do you, what do you, which way do you want it? Do you want to get there or die young? It's your choice. Anyway, here's the thing. What was I going to say? See, I'm doing it too now. Uh, oh, oh, I know what I was going to say. If this was the 1800s, I'd be in a rocking chair. If I was still alive, I'd be in a rocking chair on some porch muttering to myself because three or four years ago, I, uh, my family has a genetic condition where they get cataracts early in life. So in my early 40s, I had cataracts like an 80-year-old normally gets. I had them in my 40s. So uh, nowadays, you go in... They do a, a surgery thing. They grind up your lens and put in a fake robot one, and bam, you have great eyes for the rest of your life. You're good. Clear as a bell. In the 1800s, they didn't have any of that. So I would just be there with the – I'd be that guy with the white eyes, be all white, because uh, that's what happens to cataracts. You wouldn't see any pupils. I'd have long white hair and some sort of beard. I'd be rocking back and forth predicting the you know the end times or whatever. That's what would mm. happen. Yeah, I I, uh, I would have uh, I would have died in I what? think like first grade. I had a crazy uh, infection in my body, Ooh. and yeah, if it was if it was the oh, olden geez. days, I'd yeah. be gone already. That's right, you already wouldn't even be here. It'd so, just be over. So let's never just you, be. Y'all would have been uh, y'all would have been spared my my terrible opinions about World of Warcraft. There you go. Oh, what what horrible! Uh, I was going to say future, but actually it's present. <laughs> you're describing, but so. Essentially, Scott would have been a uh, Diablo character, is what you're saying. Yeah. And and I guess, Garrett, you would have been a, a Diablo. Like, you're also a Diablo character, but you're just like one of the villagers that dies when you're level <laughs> two and you enter, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the yes. town. And, yeah. and yes. they're like, ah! Yeah, and totally. you have to kill them again. Yeah. When I'd, I'd, I'd be one of those uh, corpses you walk by that doesn't get up. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be I'd be in a chair going Mephisto, perhaps the most evil of the prime evil. Like, that's all I would do. I'd just sit around. But like I Decker have no King. idea what he looks like. <laughs> and it would be extra weirded out because there's no Diablo in the 1800s. They don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, this has all been good and well and educational. But we have things we have to discuss today, and it all begins with this. World of Warcraft had a major week, a big week, you might say. We'll get to the Project CD Red guy hire in a minute and what we think he's going to do, you guys. Just calm yourselves down. Don't worry. That comes up today in the show. But we got to talk about what's happening in WoW. The battle for Dazala Sanar. I love that you're just as good as me to pronounce I hate the name of that thing, so I always get it wrong. It's out. It's open. It's open. The Alliance has set to stage an attack on the heart of the Zandalari Empire in a bid to sever the ties of the Zandalari and the Horde. Yes, yes. Scott. Yes. Are, are, are we going to spoil or are we a spoil-free we, we, zone? We Cause... can. I, I don't think. I mean. You're spoil. We're going to spoil. Yeah. Oh, crap. I, everywhere. I, I, it, yeah, but I, I've managed to, to avoid it and I haven't seen any. Well, that's your problem. Get off the show. <laughs> I know, I know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm saying there might be an argument. It's the first week that the raid has been up. I think it's, it would be reasonable for people. I'm sorry, to- you go poke your head in the door. That's all you have to do. You don't even need to raid it. You can just tip a toe in, and you get to see the cinematic. That's true. There's not much. Okay. There's not much to spoil. He's right. Yeah, but it's the first week. Some people don't go and play like the second. It's. It's available, and and they might. I don't know. I'm just. Def- we'll just warn them. We'll just the say. Week and the. I, I we get have it. Waited three months to see what the hell would happen with the bombs. <laughs> Alliance players have put on freaking boats. Yeah, I mean, three look, months. Patrick. Patrick is a man of the people. I understand what he's saying. <laughs> 
He wants to protect the 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 spoiler the people who are afraid of spoilers. Let's just say this: if you log into the game, you're going to just see this stuff. Uh, I guess you'll see different things depending right. on which side you're on. But go. I, I would recommend going and seeing both cinematics uh, that have been presented. Um, one is a bigger deal than the other, in my opinion. Uh, okay, well, let's just we'll, we'll get to all that. We'll talk about that in a second. I do want to talk about some of the story bits because they are we are finally getting somewhere in some ways, and in other ways, it's just like okay, wait, we're not really. This could have been shown three months ago. Like it's not. We're not getting that much new stuff out of these stories yet. Okay, but there is new content to play. Uh, this is all happening. Horde players will begin the raid by defending against the invasion in the northern jungle of Zuldazar, which is absolutely uh, happening with hood up Jaina. Jaina's got her hood up. That means war mode is on. That's what I That's what I think happens. If uh, The rest of us have to go to our cities. We have to go to or Orgrimmar or Stormwind and turn on war mode. I think Jaina just has to flip her hood up. Fluk, and now she's in war mode. This should be the thing now, actually. If you turn on war mode in your alliance, you automatically get a hood display. And if you turn on war mode in on Horde, you automatically hide your shoulders. Yeah. Like, that's how you know. Oh, or that's your how you arm know. turns dark blue. Mm, that uh, might, yeah. That might, sure. be a, that might be a spoiler coming up that's, here in a minute. That's, uh, oh, 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 it's, it's, I'm not done being cranky. Like We have had no story <laughs> to talk about since the launch of this expansion. On this show, we have not talked about the story needle moving an inch for months. Yeah. And, and now we finally have like a tiny move of the story needle and we're not allowed to talk about it. We're totally allowed to talk about it. We're totally allowed to talk about it. But I, I, all I'm saying. Okay, I, I will. Okay. No, I'll, I'll say something. Okay. Um, we can talk about it. But since I've been avoiding spoilers and I haven't seen any of it, <laughs> I feel like one of you two should do a, an epic recounting of both uh, cinematics and explain to me exactly what happens in your own way and voice and terms. All right. I'm um, going to let maybe, I'm... maybe it's one of you can take one. And so that would make it, you know, worth it for me to, to discover it in that way. Because here, here, I value the time I have with my friends. <laughs> All right. Here's the deal with, uh, with the, the, the Alliance thing. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try have, to, you have to recount it. it. I'm not going to recount like it. A retelling of the, why? Because I'm just I'm going to give the bits I understand, and then I want Garrett, who knows more about what's happening on that side of the wackadoo, to tell me about why I'm wrong about some of these details. Okay? Because I'm not really following the alliance bits very much. I just I'm just not. This is the way I play WoW. I'm a horde guy. That's what I do. So here, so here's what you're I, a horde guy who spends sixty dollars <laughs> to get an alliance, <laughs> who's <laughs> who's still sitting there not fully leveled. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the best sixty bucks I ever spent. Uh. So I did the same thing, dude. So the here, it, oh, it frustrates the crap out of me that I did that. And, and this isn't even the one everyone's like, wait, Scott, I thought you did it for a mage who was 108 and a half. No, that's a different mistake I made when I was in a fever dream. Uh, I, and that guy, by the way, that panda, that mage that I that I boosted with the free boost that comes, shouldn't call it a free boost, the boost that came with the expansion took him uh, in 106 degree fever, took him from 108.5 to 110. I went to Zoldazar, sat his ass down on the freaking... Uh, overlook there the temple and that's far as he got <laughs> i haven't done anything else with him he's just sitting there what a waste and then the 60 bucks i spent for the extra one for the alliance guy he's still sitting there he's still hanging out in freaking ghost town doing nothing ah <laughs> i suck but anyway the that point one, is uh, yeah go yeah. ahead I, I, ended up, I ended up power leveling everything else like I, all the stuff i didn't spend money on i went back and did all of legion content with the freaking druid what is Why? wrong with me? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an answer almost, for this. I can't explain it. I'm, something's wrong with me. It's almost like you can play this game the way you see fit and that there isn't a wrong way to play World of Warcraft. You know, you finally, you've unleashed my chains. I feel free as a bird now. I can fly away. You're, you and Ghostcrawler. <laughs> I'm totally off the leash now. All right. So from my understanding... Uh, Tinker Toy Tibblebilts, or whatever his freaking stupid name is, the little gnome you guys have over there. That's Gelbin. Chart. Gelbin Mechatork. That guy. He made, he put, he planted bombs on a bunch of horde ships or something. What, what's his deal? It, yeah, like uh, three months ago, at the end of the Alliance War campaign, they put bombs on our ships. Okay, so I was unaware of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You should be, honestly. If you have it, that's, it's working as intended. If you didn't play Alliance... 
Yeah, uh, I'm not supposed to know, and I didn't cheat and look. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I do feel maybe a single line should have maybe been in that cinematic of Gelbin being like, if the bombs the Alliance heroes put on these ships work, we're going to win. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. We needed something in there just to like clue in the, the horde as to just why the hell all the ships blow up. I really hate that little guy. But anyway, so but really? let me tell you why. I let love, me tell you why. I love Here's why. Because when Jaina starts talking to him, She's being all serious, like uh, we gotta go do the thing, and, and we're going to attack the at the horde where they live, and zuba zaba zuba, and she's getting all serious and everything, and then she'll turn over and go, Mecha talk, are you, is your freaking stupid button ready? And it just, I can't take it seriously. This is a, it's like her talking to a little clown or something. It just doesn't work for me. I can't do gnomes. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Um, anyway, man, I thought I thought it was so well done. I thought the the. They, 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 to me, I thought they rode the line really well of being true to the the gnomes being they're kind of adorable and silly. Yeah, like that's the gnomes' shtick. Yeah, and yet still them. making it work in like this really serious, like Saving Private Ryan esque war scene. <laughs> like I, I don't know. I thought it was brilliant. Okay. Like the, the way they animated Mechator, like he's he's bouncing. And he's, oh, all and that he's stuff's good. Don't get me wrong. On the technical level, they're killing it with these in-game yeah. stuff. Like that yeah, team I don't know. is I, I, so I, good. I really liked it a lot. The team's really good at that stuff. Now, here's the here's the other question I have. This is totally dumb, and I shouldn't even ask it. What weird kind of wireless configuration do you have where you can remote detonate all of those bombs from another ship? Like what are what Wi-Fi freaking Cl uh, yeah, uh, near band. It was right there. There's well, a satellite dish moving around in the up the top of the the device. Oh gosh, I hate all that stuff in WoW. I wish it didn't have as much of it. I know it's kind of fun and silly, but I don't know. Maybe I just I don't know. I like my sometimes I have my fantasy a little less goofball. You know, you don't you don't like uh, like siege engines and the the flying airships and I like those and and, and the, the the goblin shredders. You're not into that. No, I'm into those. Those are OK. I guess so. I the line is just drawn at satellite <laughs> dishes and red buttons. <laughs> yeah. Remote uh, remote detonation technology in, in uh, okay. Azeroth. Okay. Is not, I'm not cool right. with it. Some kind I'm of I'm just trying to find out where the tech line is for you. <laughs> some kind of near band WiMAX going on out in the ocean. Uh, it's just dumb. But anyway, whatever. She says, launch your deal. And then when she's about to, a whole bunch of um, uh, Zandalari uh, freaking flaming, uh, whatever those are, coming at them, like rocket-looking units. And they're having to, you know, stop this barrage. And one of them hits right where Tinker Toy Dingle Dong is working on his button. And it leaves a giant, massive hole. And you think he's almost dead there for a minute. And that's all very good. It's all handled real well. Jaina has to put up her arm and create like a, a mana shield. To stop yeah, she herself. Does like a, she does like a dope ass arcane barrier like block of this ballistic that lands on the ship. And yeah. It's so it's cool. really cool. And it's very arcane looking. And like you said, and it's just it's very badass. I always had it in my head that that should be a thing Paladin should be able to do is like deflect an attack by like very quickly putting their bubble up. Yeah. Like for years, I don't know, this has been a thing bouncing around my head that would be cool. Yeah. So I, I was really excited to, to see that. Right. So and then she. uh I can't remember how it all goes after that. Oh, you find out he's not dead. He scrambles around. He finds his freaking ColecoVision shitball button pusher unit. <laughs> and then he slams it down and boom, 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 boom. All the ships blow up, which looks great and is a big surprise to everybody, obviously, over on the other side. And and then Jaina pulls her hood up over her head. It goes into war mode and says, Alliance, forward. And then, then they go. So that's it. That's all. Did I get it right? Did I miss anything? No, that's pretty much it. Patrick, did it's you get did you feel the, the, the breadth and heft of the story there as I told it? You didn't tell the story. <laughs> you made silly <laughs> remarks about some of the things that were like part accessories in the story. Yeah. This is the worst possible way I could have experienced this thing that I've been <laughs> saving myself for. All right. No, fair, 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 yeah. fair point. Now I'm just gonna say. Even though I didn't go through every little story point, that's kind of my problem with the Alliance cinematic. There's really not a lot of uh, substance there. It's really just blow up those ships. Oops, we got delayed. Okay, now blow them up. Okay, cool. Now let's go. Like, that's the story on that side. It's, I, I mean, to explain what happened, it's like boats explode and it, the Alliance make it to Dizarre Lore. That's yeah, they, essentially the opening. Exactly, um, which but, is big, a big deal, but it's not, I mean, it's just action. That's it. 
That's all. Oh, it but is. it's so cool. It's so freaking cool. That's it's what good. I no, see. it's cool. I'm not gonna. I uh, listen. You'll get no argument from me. But on the horde side. Uh, with the uh, uh, King R- Rakatoon, what's his name? <laughs> Rastakhan. Uh, uh, you get a big bump. You know what? That one I kind of feel like I don't want to spoil because it it that felt meaty and storyish and and like more to it than just some action. It was it, it was a long time coming, uh, for sure. I've been waiting for that particular boot to drop for a while, but it it it, 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 it still to me it doesn't really drop. It's like a character finds out something. I've been waiting for that character to find out, and then the scene ends. And yeah. It's just like, ah. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. So, Pat, Patrick, we'll, well, I'll just tell you briefly. All right. So, King uh, Hoopty. Well, okay. So, down on the one of the lower levels of the temple, um, you got uh, Sylvanas's right hand man. What's his name? What's his name? Um, the Thanos. The Thanos is down there, <clears throat> looking all evil and stuff like he always does. And he's down there hanging with uh, who's he with down there? I forgot who's with. Uh, he's with one of the uh, Zandalari uh, like high ranking soldiers. I forget her name. Okay, so it's just a high ranking uh, soldier. Somebody was there. Well, and she's wearing she's wearing a helmet. We're pretty sure she's the one you quest with out in uh, Vidu- Valdun. But uh, in Valdun, she's got her pink mohawk. You know. Yeah, flapping around. Uh, and, but in this one, she has a she has a helmet on, so we're not one hundred percent sure. So while you're down there, sure you hear the voice of uh, Talanji go, "Father!" And then you look up. Him, him, and uh, Nathanos and Lady Pants look up to the cl- uh, cliff there, the thing overhang, and standing there is J- Lady Jaina Proudmore, who's just looking down, all evil and stuff, you know. And then she starts walking away, and Nathanos goes get to the king and he says it in this very jittery sort of shaky way it's awesome he's you can tell his he's lip quivers it's such a nice little touch oh, in the so animation good. those guys are killing it with these anyway you rush up there talanji's uh on the ground with her with her dying father um he's like i'm so sorry for what i'm you know what i'm about to, or what i've done and what i'm about to do but you don't know it and then she he grabs her arm and transfers whatever curse he deal he made with uh Bwam Samdi. And then Bwam Sambi shows up, awesome as ever, going, Hey, what does her, hey, everybody, what's up, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. And then he just walks in like Kramer in an episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> and then he's like, you don't know about the deal he made. And she's like, no. And then she realizes, I mean, the, the enemy's at the gate. She's got to go fight. So there's no time to think about why her father just sent some goo energy up her arm and her arm's all dark blue now. And uh, Bwam Sambi's having a real blast here. And uh, then it ends. So that's it. Patrick, do you feel caught up? Are you good? I'm watching the Alliance cinematic now. <laughs> I didn't listen to a word you said. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Um, <laughs> and it, it's it's kind of cool. Yeah, it I is like cool. it. It is cool. Yeah, that's that's what we were saying. You should fantastic. watch it. Don't listen to us. You should watch it for real and then really enjoy it. And also the the That's one. what I've been saying since the beginning <laughs> of this episode. <laughs> But it was fun to recount it a little bit. It's a good time. But you didn't recount. <laughs> I love how bad Patrick is, but he didn't watch the cinematics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're finally catching up. Jeez. All right. And then uh, well, let's talk about the raid itself. There are a dozen new formidable boss encounters, including Jaina Proudmore, King Rakas, uh, uh, Rastakhan. I always want to say Rastakhan. Ra- Rastakhan. Uh, King, like, King, uh, Ra- King Rice-a-Roni. Rice-a-Roni is in there. Yep. And... Uh, t- Tortellini is his daughter. We'll keep all these names straight, everybody. Uh, anyway. Phalange. Phalange. Wait, no. Phalan- not- Phalange. Oh, Phalange. Right. It's Phalange like uh, Phoebe Buffay's alter ego. Yeah. Oh, look at you. A friend fan. Except- I didn't know that. I don't. Of course. You're a friend. I don't know You're- what that is. He's a friend of fa- He's a friend of fans. He's a fan of friends. The show Friends. I- oh, that's why I don't know it. Because you don't oh. like Friends at all. No, it's not well, that I don't like it. I just don't. Maybe. I just haven't Maybe we're, we're getting back to the to the age thing. Uh, he's a bit too young. <laughs> yeah, he we doesn't were, know these when the things. when the when the I cast of Friends were were, were young twenties uh, living in New York, single people. That's what Patrick and I, young twenties living I mean, in New I've York, seen, single people. I've right? seen Seinfeld all the way through like five times. I just haven't watched Friends. Oh well, I, you know what? Let me tell well, you this. If you had, you'd know of a character called Phoebe who sometimes uh, impersonates another, well, a, a fictional character called Regina Phalange. There you Phalange. go. Phalange. And, and you remember Phalange like that. Yeah, well done. Ah. So, uh, Garrett, I would recommend, if you're going to watch it, 
Remember this. The reason Seinfeld's one of the greatest things ever is they never got serious. They never took themselves seriously. So never was there a very special episode or never was there a moment where everyone got all serious or the audience went, oh, or any of that bull crap, right, that I hate in comedies, especially ones with laugh tracks and audiences. Friends is funny. It's like funny, 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 try to be serious, funny, funny, try to be serious, try to be serious, funny, 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 try to be serious. So if you can deal with that, then you'll you'll be all right. You should watch it. It doesn't try to be serious. It's a Ross and Rachel bullshit all the time. Just we, it sucks. <laughs> what? Unless you want to hear me talk about Scrubs, I think we move back to talking. <laughs> about Ooh, we Scrubs. could talk about Scrubs. I, I mean, Scrubs. Scrubs. I I know. Okay. I, I love anyway, Scrubs. yes, World of Warcraft. Okay, World of Warcraft. <laughs> Scrubs is great, by the way. Let's just throw that in there. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's what's going on in there. Mythic uh, difficulty and Raid Finder Wing One will open as scheduled uh, January 29th. So we're a little ways off from that. Um, my old raid team I know uh, the other night went in and took them two hours to get the first boss down. So they're already banging their heads against it. But there's already been many world firsts. Well, a world first and then a few others have followed them. And I didn't write down the guild name. Maybe they're not even a guild anymore because they're just cross-server people. I'm not actually sure about that. But uh, they did it. So we're already done with normal and heroic world firsts. If you want to <clears throat> make your uh, your attempt to get the mythic done, you're gonna have to wait until the 29th. And for people like Patrick who wants to do the LFR version only, probably, I'm just kidding. It sounds like I'm throwing shade. I I don't care how people play it. Uh, Ra uh, Raid Finder uh, Wing One will open on the 29th, and you get the second wing on the 12th of February. Okay. Oh, and then th uh, cool. Wing Three is open on the 26th of February. So that's the plan. We are finally there. We finally have some new content, and uh, we've talked a little bit about story. Let's highlight some of what happened in yesterday's Q&A with uh, Ian Hazakostas, who sat down with Lore, and they did their thing. Uh, by the way, they need better cameras and better uh, thumbnails for their videos. I'm just going to put that out there. It always catches them when, like, Lore's got one eye open and is kind of doing this like he's going to scratch something, and Ian looks like he's, like, checking an armpit out or something. It's, they need to get, like, a nice graphic there. Just throwing it out there, wow, or a blizzard, just if you're listening. I know things are a little weird over there right now, but, you know, you can do it. All right. Anyway, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Q&A. The Q&A. Yes, here, here are some big Questions takeaways. Questions and answers. Yes, here are some of the big uh, highlights for me anyway. It was actually not, I don't think, all that great of a Q&A. It was pretty uh, stuff we either already knew or a lot of standard answers for a lot of things. Not that I was expecting much more than that, but there were a few highlights Kultiran humans and Zandalari trolls arrive with 8.1.5. Now, originally, the plan was they would be out by now. The reason they're not is twofold. They said it was story reasons and also that the Kultirans are hard to make and they take a lot longer because they are the whole, they're a whole new rig in the game as opposed to every other um, conversion or, or new uh, race type. You could take the, the Nightborn and, and it's based on the rig of the, of the Night Elves. Um, they're not Nightborn. What are they called? The something born? What are they? What's wrong with me? They're the Nightborn. What? Okay, it is the Nightborn. Yeah. Anyway, same rig as the Night Elves. So easy peasy. No no problem there. The other elves are just like uh, Blood Elves, so they're easy again. Uh, the Forged Troll do, or, um, uh, Dwarf guys, they're basically dwarves. So it's that's just a lot of skinning and a few extra spins here and there. But the Kul Tirans, are weird shaped brand new rig not based on anything else in the game and they say that took them longer which i find interesting because i like how the sausage was made stuff that's interesting to me when we hear but about blizzard things yes how, did they try at least a little to defend the fact that we've had like two brand new races with new skeletons in expansions in the past that came with launch uh who are they remind me who who we get uh, every other race ever before <laughs> before allied races well, so blood elves and draenei at yeah. launch of burning crusade yeah goblins and worgen at the launch of cataclysm yeah well maybe in this case it's just that they were never the focus i mean i agree with you that i i felt like i was sold a bill of goods in the early days that said one of the huge reasons this expansion is going to be rad is because we're in the cycle where you get a new race. That's usually what happens. Last time it was class. This time it's race. Yeah. Oh, and, and pandas for Pandaria as and, well. Yeah, exactly. And in this case, we got we didn't get that. We got promise of of more later. I don't know. They didn't actually. I mean, they didn't address it, but I'm guessing they just got behind on it. Or I'm, I'm, I ask because I'm, I'm I'm kind of being facetious. I'm I'm very grumpy. This feels like something that should have been in the game at launch. Like. Yeah. 
I don't like it's cool that we just need to finish the war campaign to unlock them, but it's like we've been fighting alongside these people since the first day of the expansion. We should have just been able to roll Kul Tirans and Sandalari right out the gate, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're probably right. I think that would have been better for them. I mean, you look, all you need is a little Disney World and you're gonna be fine. All this grumpiness will be gone when you get down there. <laughs> it's the Magic Kingdom. It's the happiest place on earth. You're gonna get down there and go, ah, crowds and people are crammed into tiny places and why am I here? It'll be great. I'm excited for you. <laughs> Katsumi in the chat room says, fat humans should be similar to pandas. I want to see Kulteerans now with the short, stubby little legs that the Pandarans have. That would be hilarious. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I I, uh, I mean, well, yeah, that's a, uh, Max Power makes a good point. Seems like the end of Legion, they were not wanting to put the resources into wholly new models, just rescans, and someone won the argument that they needed to be included. Maybe, maybe. I can see how that would happen in a workflow. Um, but the Kulterans are a different bag. You can't just skin them. But I really did think, I, 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 I mean, straight up, when I, when I, when this expansion was announced and its features were discussed, I thought I would on day one, if I wanted to, could dork around with a Zandalari troll. I just did. That's how it sounded. Everything that they announced, I thought I, I could. And I also thought during that Legion space where we started to get wind of who the other the races in there were going to be and we we're getting that stuff early like the high mountain uh torn and all that i thought that that stuff by the time this expansion rolled around would just be accessible and not have to go back and do stupid stuff in legion if you didn't do it before i still am pissed about that i think that was lame i understand people who unlocked it are happy they unlocked it i get it i'm saying it shouldn't have ever been that in the first place it just should be Oh, okay. Well, here these guys are coming in the next expansion. That's exciting. Ooh, here they are now. Go play one if you want to make one. I don't know. Maybe I'm old fashioned that way. Uh, where are we now? What are we looking at here? Oh, um, and then uh, they say, uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, I already read that. Oh, and no ma Oh, this is I thought a big deal. He says no major class changes until the next expansion. So if you're expecting any kind of big rework, other than you know tweaks here and balance changes there, little stuff, uh, no changes to, to classes until whatever the next expansion would be, which we would in theory hear about either. I guess it would be this BlizzCon if there was one. If there's an announcement, it would be at BlizzCon, wouldn't there be? I guess it could be any time during the year, but. Yeah, I mean, there's always a chance, like at a Gamescom or something. Mm -hmm. But they did that with Legion, right? Yeah, Legion was yeah. was yeah, Legion, uh, Legion. Gamescom. It was two days, yeah. two days after Nerdtacular 2015, where Chris Metzen thought I was getting everybody in trouble because I had Liam O'Brien do a read for the video, and none of us knew it had anything to do with. Oh, him. that's right. I yeah. forgot about that. He was freaked out. He was like, dude, what do they know? Like, he really thought we were <laughs> scooping it. And I'm like, I, we had no idea. And I don't think Liam, I'm not sure Liam in retrospect would do it again. <laughs> I think I think he hadn't put two and two together that it would be perceived as a, not a leak, but, you know, like a hint or whatever. But it was, that was a fun moment in my life. Anyway, uh, yeah, so... So who knows, but uh, you're not going to get any changes. So Patrick, all your desires for whatever your favorite class is that you want to see change right now, you're not going to get it until a new expansion. And even then, who knows if you will. What do you think of that? I wasn't listening. That's what, what I thought. I feel like you're on the point. Are you on the point? Who's on the point? Yes. Ah, oh, sweet. Who's winning? Anybody winning? You winning? Uh, the jury's still out. <laughs> Patrick's playing... Overwatch on the show, which I love. I love that you do that. I was I, don't have I was listening until like, but right now it's super tense. We're in overtime. Are we? Are, are, we, was, are, are we bothering you, Patrick? <laughs> like, do, do you ask your question again? Are we I will interrupting you. I promise. <laughs> I will most likely answer if you ask man, again. Man, man, don't you do another well podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Those icy veins. I know on that show he plays uh, Hearthstone the whole time. That's fine. <laughs> Hey, Pat Patrick, it's funny you say or this all came up because because of you, I'm kind of back into Overwatch again, weirdly. And it's oh, all really? Yeah, it's all because two weeks ago when you played on the show, I thought, oh, yeah, I haven't been in there in a while. I should probably get in there again. So I'm kind of back into playing Overwatch because of you and what you're doing. So look at you making a uh, Blizzard evangelist till the end. Well done. Congratulations. You're welcome. Podcasters. Now, what was the question? I don't even remember. It was it something. It, it was something it, good. It, the, the moment. The moment is gone, Patrick. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't know. I feel like the moment is still there. <laughs> <laughs>
the moment's there until uh, your team is in their victory poses and someone gets play of the game. All right. Yeah. Uh, and we won. Yeah, of course. Let's talk about this, though. Patrick, you have to have thoughts on this guy. Blizzard hired a huge okay. get, I think, from Project CD Red. This is the story lead on much of the Witcher series and was the story lead on Cyberpunk 20... What's the year they give that game? 77. 27.7. 27.7. I didn't know that game was based on a tabletop game, by the way. I didn't know that. Did you guys what? know that? Yeah. You didn't know Cyberpunk? Nah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't at one point, and then I found out, and then I forgot again because I don't think it's that important of a detail. It's not. It's like The Witcher being based on books. I didn't know that when I played The Witcher the first time. Now I know. I'm sure they're good, but I didn't know they were based on books. So same same thing for me. Yeah. Uh, not that big a deal. But anyway, he is now left and uh, headed over to Blizzard. Uh, I'm going to give you his name, and let's see how I butcher it. Here we go, because he's a Polish dude, and so those names are always easy. Here it is. Sebastian, that part's easy. Oh, Variety, really? You're going to make me sit here for 10 seconds for an ad? This is fantastic. Hold on you can skip it. I know. I just hate it. Top right. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I know how the internet works. I got this. It's good. I got it. Okay. I <laughs> <see you. laughs> His name is Sebastian Stepian. I think. I don't know. Uh, he has left the Polish game studio this year for a role as creative director for Blizzard Entertainment, according to a recent changes in the uh, developer's LinkedIn page spotted by a user. Uh, and then that got posted everywhere. Over a near 13-year career with CD Projekt Red, Stepien, or Stepien, however you say it, rose through yeah, the ranks. I looked it up yesterday. I think, I think it is Stepien. Is it Stepien? Okay. He uh, started out as a junior dialogue writer in 06 and then became lead story designer in 2010 after being promoted to creative director for Cyberpunk 2077 in 2013, which was well before we'd seen anything from that game other than rumors. Um, the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, Witcher 2, Witcher 2, The Witcher Enhanced Edition, and the original The Witcher. Uh, he began with his new role at Blizzard in January 2019, so he's there now. It is very unclear, entirely unclear, what project he's currently working on, if any. If this is a more executive position, uh, you know, when Metzen left, he was head of all, what was it? Um, they had a term. Uh, head creative, of, I guess. Creative something. Uh, some Is franchise development. Creative, pre president of creative franchise development or something. Whatever it was. So he was kind of like creative guy over all franchises. And I'm not saying that's what his job is, but I'm saying it's possible. It's like one of those more executive upper echelon deals. Or it could just be uh, a game we don't know about yet. So let's let's pontificate here. Uh, Patrick, what do you think he's working on? Do you think it's a new game? Do you think it's an old game? Do you think it's a... What's this guy doing? I have no idea. But uh, yeah, it's, it's fun to speculate. I would... The thing that struck me is the fact that we don't usually have, I think, people who are super into story development at Blizzard. Or maybe I shouldn't say that. I don't think the story is usually the best, most important part of Blizzard games. Uh, I've often found it to be relatively weak. Uh, WoW might be the, the exception in some uh, parts, but not in all. Mm. It's, it's deep when you look into it further, but in the games themselves, I don't know. I feel it's not the kind of thing you need someone from, you know, who developed a super narrative-focused game like The Witcher. So, and of course, we know that they're working on Diablo 4. So I'm kind of wondering, are they going into the kind of uh, direction for Diablo 4 that would necessitate someone who's really good about writing stuff? Mm. I mean, it's clearly, or maybe yeah. I'm guessing it's either that or another, a completely different uh, game, like a new IP. Maybe it's an Overwatch based game. I'm certain given how little they have developed the story in overwatch um like just s straight up developing the story uh, uh you know of the the universe and the game it's all light touches like it's been for a while but so i think there's definitely going to be another game in the franchise it's pretty obvious yeah uh, why wouldn't there be and maybe that's that's it maybe it's uh Diablo 4, I'd be interested to see a Diablo 4 with a strong narrative focus because, I've, as we all agree, I think 3 was kind of crappy. Yeah, it wasn't great. I mean, yeah. I mean, I love 3, but not for its story. 
not for the story. Yeah. It's it's. I love it's some character probably... stuff. There are beats in there I really like, but it's it's not like a really. Yeah, Which there's ones? a few things. I mean, I it's mostly just iconic confrontations between Imperius and Tyrael, for example, or um, the like. All I think the cutscenes are incredible in that game, and they're super cool and well, iconic moments. Yeah, but, but not story wise. No, no, right? no, no. That's what I'm saying. Is like. The, there, are, there are beats in the story where they illustrate them really well. Let's put it that way. Mm. I think Imperius is a great character. Yeah. I wouldn't say story wise it. Oh no, they Reaper they have soul is better. That's what I'm saying. They have great characters that they have not that they did not take in really great story directions, and that bums me out a little. There's plenty of work to do there. They could do, but uh, Garrett, I'm curious what you think. You think uh, maybe we get a standalone RPG? Ooh, because that's what this guy makes. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, I mean, I certainly hope so. That's what I would like. <laughs> I would really like to, to see some single player uh, at, at a blizzard in the future. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, given the guy's back catalog of work, I mean, it could be anything. I mean, CD Projekt Red does fantasy and sci-fi. Yeah. Uh, and that's the gamut of what Blizzard covers. So I don't think there's like anything i'm like oh it's obvious he's working on this um i think it's it's likely he could be working on the next diablo game yeah and it's uh and kind of helping out with the story over there because i'm with you i think diablo 3 was was pretty weak yeah in the grand scheme of things i agree um but yeah i just it's hard for me not to just run away with what i hope was like i'd like to see a cd project red-esque game oh from my blizzard gosh, dude it just gets me so going to think, start thinking about it. So this is the other problem. <clears throat> I've been playing Vermintide 2 a lot uh, with friends, and it's fun, and it's cool, and it makes me wish all RPGs looked like it and that all uh, boss fights and raids felt like it. I know it's not the same world or game or any of that, but <clears throat> they've recreated the, some of that stuff in the most amazing detail. It's just really cool. But there's this, there's this uh, uh, mission you run in that game where you enter what feels like a hyper realistic version of what Orgrimmar would look like it's got all the uh, traditional sort of orc spikes sticking out to be defenses for the gates and things like that and the whole place just feels like an orc hellscape it's awesome and every time I play that game I go man I want a game that looks like this what set this? in Warcraft Vermintide 2 Vermintide 2 oh Vermintide gotcha. Warhammer yeah. okay yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't played it's it at really all. cool it's so cool some of those places by the way that game is it is a good game by itself. It is a incredible experience with friends. At the end of the day, it's kind of left for dead with leveling and loot. I get that. Um, that's all you had to tell me. All right, I'm interested in Vermintide. You now. should play <laughs> Vermintide too, then, because it's because that's exactly what it is. Um, you even have the special mobs that come and get you. Like you know, there's equivalents to Left for Dead. The guy that would jump on you and pound on you until you shot him off. What was his? What are who's he, who's he was oh, called? God, the jockey. Ja uh, yeah. Oh yeah. No, was it the jockey? No, he was the one to get on your head and make you run the other way. It's the one okay, that would yeah. leap so on you. Thinking of the uh, the guy in the hood. Uh, what were they called? Stalkers. Stalkers. That's it. There's an equivalent to kind of that. There's this ver there's this character type that does a similar thing. So there's stuff like that in the game as you play through, and then there's big boss battles at the end, and there's. All this, but then there's also the loot and the progression, and the entire thing, at least visually and action-wise, makes me go, "Man, why is this not how I'm raiding in World of Warcraft? Why can't this be an MMO at some point, or somebody figure out a way to meld this fidelity with, with the with the games, you know, with with a game that I love like like Warcraft or an MMO? Oh, it, it, yeah, it would have to be a new game. It would totally have to be. Uh, I, I totally agree. I mean, that's not even what this game is. It's just. It just is so inspirational to see the detail in it and go, that's Warcraft if Warcraft was not a cartoon. It's hard to I mean, explain. Ver Ver Vermintide also, like from what I've seen, is a little uh, a little lacking in its color palette. Uh, depends um, on where you go. Of, <laughs> depends on where you go. It's kind of like, a, I call them dirt games. Like everything's brown. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's dirt a good games. way of uh, characterizing Yeah, them. I like it. Dirt games. <laughs> like, like you're like the first Gears of War. Like it was like this looks amazing. Of course it does. It's freaking black and white. <laughs> There's no color. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. No. It, um, it, it depends on where you're at in this thing. I, I would actually say there's a lot of variety, but it's usually variety between between levels. So like, one level is very colorful, jungly thing, and the next one is this dirt, like you say, 
and then the other one is totally different than that. Like they do, they do keep a lot of variety there, but it's not in the same run necessarily. But it's a really cool, mm. it's a cool game. It, you know, tons of people still playing it. It's a really beautiful PC game. But um, my my point with that is, uh, I see that and I just go, oh, Blizzard, can you just do some next Jenny? And then it always comes back to me. I want like a Warcraft single player focused. It can have multiplayer elements, but single player focused. Uh, Warcraft adventure in the vein of Skyrim or something, I would just, oh, I would poop myself. I would poop myself. Yeah. There would be poop in my pants, you guys. Yeah, to to me, it's like I don't know. If you're looking to make money, it just seems like a license to print money. Yeah, making. I making mean, it does like that. It does, but I think I don't know. But maybe, but nobody's making multi. Everyone's a focus so much on multiplayer and freaking mobile now, and and Blizzard's well, like everything's got to be an thing esport. About- yeah. Games as a service is that you can keep making money once you have people invested. So that's, the, you know, the, the the ones that are still doing uh, super ambitious single player experiences are more often than not the uh, manufacturers, console manufacturers, and they're exclusives. So they have a, you know, it's kind of the, the cost is a little bit offset. Um, and, and I do want to say as well, the fact that he was doing that at CD Projekt, everyone is like, oh, so Blizzard is making The Witcher Warcraft. Like, there's very little chance that the reason they got him was to make the exact same games he was making at CD Projekt. Mm-hmm. They're just, they need someone to write good story, and he can do that. And also, he's probably making a ton more money at you know, at Blizzard in the U.S. than he was, um, I think Belular mentioned this, than he was in um, in in Poland. Yeah. So that's worth mentioning as well. It, it might even be that he's completely copping out. He's like, have those great games. I want a lot of money and I'm going to get that at Blizzard because they need me and their games are not, I don't know. I'm. It's possible. It. Uh, it's possible. I, I, I think the next PC Diablo is going to be the closest thing we get to kind of what we're talking about here. Cause I think it's right. going to take a but, page out of the book of things we've been seeing from games like destiny and the division. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I know. I absolutely. Know. But it's still going to be, yeah, it's still going to be a very uh, multiplayer focused game. I mean, Diablo, oh, you can't totally. make it not multiplayer, right? Well, I right. mean, you could, but they won't though. I, I agree with you guys hundred percent on that. The thing is, if you look at blizzards lineup, you go look at the launcher right now the most single player thing they make is Diablo and that's got multiplayer all over it if you if you use those features but it's the closest you're going to get to a single player experience if you want one yeah you can play through wow a lot that's you know a lot of single player I understand that but as a standalone sort of packaged game that game still is the only thing in their lineup that feels that way to me everything else is multiplayer focused and I just don't well, yeah. see them shifting back and going well what if we did a purely i mean it could have co-op it could have other stuff it, I, I would just love it though i just don't know if the money's there anymore and the numbers they need for for those kind of games which really bums me yeah, out to even say and, it and if i were i mean as much as i would like that i mean i think my dream game is something that's kind of in the vein of like like you said like a skyrim but i want to be able to play with my friends i'm not sure i want it to be massive like a like a full-on mmo mm-hmm. but maybe something more like a diablo or a destiny where you're with a small group and you head out into a large world yeah I, I, th- um, I think I'm with you on that, and also I'd don't, really like to see Blizzard spin on that. If they, if the guy's coming fresh from a very sci-fi point of view, and this is where his strengths have been for the last six years, maybe StarCraft Two finally gets a something, you know, finally gets a gets a deal. Yeah, StarCraft Two is single player kill, Mark. You make a good point, but it's also they want you in multiplayer. Over yeah, there. it's very old school though, like yeah. doing RTS. I mean that that is like the oldest of old school Blizzard. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I don't. Like, do you think we're ever going to see another like RTS campaign out no. of Blizzard? No. I mean they I, might I find keep, it. They might keep adding things like they have been doing the hero pack stuff or whatever. It's the hero campaigns for for the game, but I don't think they're. I don't. I don't think we live in a world anymore in a, in a post mobile world where anyone makes like you're going to have lots of little side ones. Like I just picked up Warhammer 40k. Uh, what's it called gothic armada 2 which is uh it's an rts it's set in space it's super rad big giant ships doing all kinds of nasty in space it's fantastic 
but it's very niche. And that's how this stuff's going to be forever. Like RTS isn't dead, but I don't think it's ever flagship giant studio. Here's our new RTS game. I just don't think it happens. No. No, we're we're past so that, which bums me out a little just because I think there's some there's fun to be had. And maybe there's a resurgence at some point. But I think that resurgence was StarCraft 2. I think that was your chance. And they and they it did great. It did great and lost interest a little bit over time. But that was in conjunction with the uh, with the rise of MOBAs and you know Blizzard Blizzard back back to particular donkey <laughs> and uh, decided not to back the other donkey and the other donkey took over in that space. So what are you gonna do? All right. Well, we'll see. We don't know what he's gonna do. We'll find out soon enough. But for now, it's time for this. Wait, now this. There we go. I know how to push buttons. I've won awards for this. Hey, check it out. Uh, what's going on around Blizzard? Hearthstone? What's happening? Anything? Just cards? That's it? Just cards? We, uh, we're we got a rank play update. Oh, good. How's that working for everybody? They are, they, they are drastically reducing the amount of stars you need to get to uh, move between uh, ranks. So uh, when, uh, there was a point where they made them all five stars. Like yeah. There's five stars in every rank from rank 50 to legend rank. There's five stars for each rank. Uh, now rank 50 through 16 is only going to need three stars uh, to move through. Uh, 15 through 11 are down to four stars. And then once you hit 10, it's now you're back to the normal five stars per rank. So well, you're going to be able to climb quicker. I, that sounds like an improvement to the video game I've not been playing. So there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Heroes is still Heroes. There's not a lot of news going on. We're a couple weeks past the release of Imperius. I feel like nobody's talking about him, but uh, you know he's there doing his thing. Oh, well, we got a giant patch. Wednesday. Huge patch, but all, but all small stuff. It's like tweak here and tweak there. I had this theory on Core that maybe this patch was the beginning of them setting the stage for a refocus on the game in a way that that you know forgets a little bit about high level pro play and just focuses on what they want to make and not just constantly counterbalancing and balancing all day um and that this lays the groundwork for that it's a nice flat little many heroes affected it's very small simple ways kind of thing happening but I, I there's probably nothing to that that's just me being wishful thinking about it i don't know but heroes still in a weird place we're, we're kind of in a holding pattern we need to see what they do like blizzard has blizzard has a little bit to prove in terms of their will um you know post the announcement of hcc going away and then pulling back from the game a little bit but then them saying hey this is a new chance for us to refocus our efforts on this game and make the game we want to make well I, we need to see some of that and i don't know what that is yet so uh it's, it, we're I think we're waiting for the the merge of Hero League and Team League, which we knew was coming, yeah. and I was expecting to take a decent amount of time anyway. So I, I honestly, I don't see this little bit of, of quiet time here in January uh, as as a big deal, um, because I, I also like to point out to everyone that usually over the holidays we don't see anything from heroes, and we yeah. got a new hero and I believe two patches over the holiday break. This is true. Which is a lot more than we usually get. That is absolutely true. Uh, Overwatch got a bunch of ch the new uh, Chinese New Year skins things they always do for this holiday, and they all are rad as always. So if you're into that and you're skin hunting, it's it's that time of year, baby. It started yesterday. And, Just stay uh, on the point. Yeah, stay on the point. Stay no matter what point. you do, that's what you have to do. Uh, Diablo season 16 started, and uh, there's some nice stuff in there if you dig deep. If you want to go look at what that includes, it's actually a, a bit more than your usual season mostly in the form of old sets being tweaked and having like colossally buffed stuff happen so uh, well there's that and there's the fact that the um the the buff for the season is the the it's the season of grandeur so essentially you have the passive effect of uh the ring of royal grandeur always active yeah. which is very different from the previous seasons because in previous seasons it was like you get more stuff from goblins or you get more stuff from bounties and here it's actually changing the way uh to an extent the way you play the game and a lot of people have it on switch and so that's a good reason to get into it oh i didn't even thought about that yeah they're getting their seasons over there as well mm -hmm. uh lobster shaver says when's the last time i play overwatch yesterday lobster shaver i've been playing it again we must not have been here earlier when i said that I like Overwatch. Overwatch is great. I just kind of took a break. That's all. Um, again, I killed it, dude. I took some junk rap business uh, out into the world and just destroyed fools. Also, 
uh, Brigitte or Brigitte or Briquette or whatever the hell her name is. She's still broken. Brigitte. Yeah, she's still Brigitte. freaking OP and busted. Okay? She just is. No, she isn't. She isn't. Mm. No, she was nerfed, and now she's a good healer, but not as... You just shouldn't stay too close to her. Maybe that's your problem. Yeah, I get too close. I'm attracted to her. What can I tell you? That, that is understandable. Uh, That's the end of that. Hey, how about we do one of these right here? Whoops, right here. Hear ye, hear ye. Why, it's the town crier. <laughs> Time for the town crier. That's an email. That's what that is. And you guys send them in to us at the instance at gmail.com. We got one from Almighty Cow. I love it. Hmm. All should bow down to Almighty Cow. Uh, his uh, subject line was the slash whistle removal. Hmm. Controversial we, that was. Are we freaking back on this, really? Yeah, check it out. Check it out, dude. We're going to dig this corpse back up, reanimate it, and then put him back in the grave. It says this. Hey, Instance Crew. Just wanted to start out by saying that everything you guys said about the cat calling a couple episodes ago was dead on. On the flip side of that, my wife and I play WoW together and, and love the slash flirting and slash whistling at each other throughout our play session. And we're very disappointed that they changed the slash whistle. It's obviously not the end of the world of Warcraft. Uh, nor a big deal at all. Just wanted to point out that it wasn't all objectifying women, uh, and that there was some that was being, or there was some fun being had with it. Thanks a ton. Love the show, Almighty Cow. I mean, yeah, there's there are cases, right? Like, there, the you're you're playing with your wife, and she's playing with you, and you whistle at her, ha ha. That's a funny flirty unit deal we just had there, honey. Wasn't that great? Let's go do it, <laughs> you know, or whatever. I don't know, but. <laughs> That's probably how it goes. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's definitely <laughs> that's how it goes, right? I have that nail- I nailed that. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is I agree with him across the board here. Yes, there were innocuous uses of it. Yes, it's not the end of the world, and that's that's pretty much it. So thanks for the email that we all agree with. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to there's nothing there to like dis- disagree with. He's like, I, I, all I can say is I did that too. Yeah. yeah, Katie and I would would whistle all the time. Yeah, I never Although used Katie, it. I swear to God, Katie had the the slash no like hotkey though, because she would always hit back real fast with the no. Mm. I do this thing uh, in the game that I still do. My hunter who has not have ma- hasn't had mana since what Wrath of the Lich King at the end of that. I think. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Cataclysm yeah. hasn't Cataclysm forty hasn't had mana, but he still can do the slash O O M, which is out of mana. So I do it all the time. Like we'll finish a fight in a thing and I'll go. And that's again, the hunter who's now got energy. It's got nothing to do with mana. I'll type slash OOM and he'll go, I need mana. My mana is low. I'm out of mana. Like all of those lines. It's fantastic. I love spamming that because it makes no sense. I feel like this, this would become like some kind of coded racist language for some reason on the internet. Like people who say I'm out of mana when they don't actually have mana are meaning some horrible, horrible thing. Yeah, they'll I don't figure know. it out. I'm, I'm, no, they'll figure it out. You're right. They'll take any innocent thing and turn it into whatever. So you're, I puzzle. But until then, enjoy it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm puzzled, Patrick. I don't follow at all. No, it would like it would start on uh, 4chan. Somebody on 4chan would go, yeah, exactly. Hey, you know what we should do? We should make people think that t- sl- doing slash o o m means this, and then it would start to spread. And then before you know it, some national freaking Newsweek dot com's reporting. Uh, kids today are using a new form of uh, signaling racist <laughs> overtones to each other with slash o o m. Let's talk to Francis they- Magini for more. Like, it's that's what it. <laughs> They aren't because they're not playing World of Warcraft. They're playing Fortnite. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's true. It's a good point. That's their chat room and everything now, you know. That's where everyone goes to be and live and stay. All the kids. I feel like I've, it's, it's World, of Warcraft. World, World, World of Warcraft is the video game retirement for <laughs> all of us. All of us well, all again, we are for, in our 40s and, and 30s and 50s. Yeah, I'm glad we brought it back around to that topic. It's such a we fun got, one. Uh, we got three big decades all, all covered here. Someone in the chat would like to know if you're playing uh, Magic the Gathering Arena or not. Are you playing uh, it? I did a bit over the holidays. I really liked it. I just don't have enough time. No bandwidth for an additional. I, I, Kyle and I were talking about this on the after after into the Nexus last night, and I said, you know, if 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 uh, Jalen Bragg did go up and like pull, just pull the switch and be like, that's it, Heroes is dead. And yeah. suddenly I had this big void of game time. I'm pretty sure Magic Arena is where I would go. It's It seems cool. Like they're, um, I don't know, it's ironic because 
they're they're getting the mo- they're getting a lot of talk and chatter right now, and they were the ones that suffered the most from not having a strong presence in a digital forum. Their original Magic the Gathering itera- uh, iterations for computer were terrible. They were awful. Um, and to have this come full circle and have them putting out a a quality Magic experience for Magic fans is kind of cool. I think that's to, great. to me, it it reminds me of like when Guild Wars Two came out uh, and its relationship to World of Warcraft mm. because. Up until then, it was everyone the other. I'm gonna be a WoW killer, and they never were. Yeah, it never happened, and that was happening for a while with Hearthstone. You had Gwent come out. Mm-hmm. Nope, yeah. you had all these other extraneous. Uh, wasn't there an Elder Scrolls card game? I can't even remember the name of. That's yeah, how much no one cared about it. It's still going. It's called Elder Scrolls Legends, and I I know it has its fans, but I don't think it did. It didn't crack what it was trying to crack. Right, like not even close. Yeah. Um, so. And then that's, you know, we saw the same thing happen with, with World of Warcraft. And I have enjoyed quite a few of those MMOs. I've really enjoyed Tor. I, I had a good time with Rift. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they, they were far from, like, taking out World of Warcraft. And I think that's what we're seeing with Hearthstone. Like, yeah. uh, you had all these other card games come out. Some were fine. You know, it's, it's nothing against them. But they didn't, they didn't unseat Hearthstone. Yeah. And now, uh, and so I'm kind of looking at Magic like, oh, it's like Guild Wars 2. It's like, it's just really good. Yeah. It's just really it's, strong, and it's and it will probably continue to be, and it'll have enough of a fan base like Guild Wars Two that'll stick around and do good stuff. And I think, yeah, I would say ESO to a to a degree. ESO has gotten really strong. I like that MMO a lot. But, yeah, yeah. Really, Artifact is the one that's just puzzling. I, I thought it was going to come and rock the world, and nobody cares. Nobody's playing Artifact. Like, what? That it's, must uh, suck, man. Like for to be that. What's his name? Richard Garfield. Is that his name? The creator of Magic, and then he made that too for Valve. I can't remember his uh, name. Is it Richard Garfield? His Whatever his name is. But just imagine how he must feel right now. Like nobody is playing your new game over there. Like nobody. And like Artifact went from like all the talk to like zip zap. I, I think it's going to be one of those games, like almost like Rainbow it's, Six Siege. I think in a year we're going to be like, oh crap, everyone really likes this game. Oh, yeah. it's, Siege was, it's going to need to go free to play. That's yeah. a huge issue. Well, it is free it's, to play. You have just to pay do, for it. You mean the? No, you have to. No, pay it isn't. For it. You have to you pay. You have to buy it for twenty dollars just to get in the door. Oh, F yeah, that. and yeah. then you have to buy more stuff and cards and stuff. Yeah, F that. I don't want to do that. Yeah, it is. It's <laughs> not a. That's the reaction of a lot of people. That's for potato heads. I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, well, at least in Magic, when I, when I spend money, I get to keep cards. Well, like, what was Valve thinking, you guys? They know free to play better than anybody with all their experience with freaking it's very strange. Dota and everything. It's Especially very with Hearthstone as the free to play alternative. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Very odd. All right. Well, dummies. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you going to do? Thanks, Almighty Cow, for your email. The instance at gmail.com is that address. Don't forget, if you are looking for more Garrett in your life, go to amove.tv. Anything happening there you want people to be aware of at the moment? Uh, as always, I'd like folks to go check out my solo show because I, I do more WoW talk over there. It's R2-T2 is yep. how you can find it. And uh, I'm just sprucing that up. And then also, uh, go check out my graphic design portfolio. I finally updated it. Oh. It's at no moon, no moon art.com. Nice. That means there'll be no images of anyone mooning anybody over there. I can guarantee it unless someone between me saying that and and you going and looking at the website hacks my website and puts butts on oh, it. Praise Yog Saron. That makes me very happy to hear that. I don't want to see any butts. Uh, well, that's fantastic. Uh, Patrick, of course, over at frenchspin.com. What's going on, Patrick? Anything cool people should see and look at? Uh, I guess uh, Pixels is a video game show that you might enjoy where we talk about the wonderful world of gaming um and uh the fidius club is also cool where we talk about the actual world which is maybe not so wonderful but at least we try to understand it yeah it's a good show that's uh, if you're feeling politically uh it's like it's like eating your greens you might not like doing it but you feel better afterwards yeah it gives it gives you a good poo you have a good poo from it that's right? Not exactly where I was going. Well, it's fiber. It's bul- It's a good bulking agent. You just have a better poo. I mean, look, we're here for the 40s and the 30s people who are going to start <laughs> have to worry about their poo. So good luck to you. All right. Uh, also, uh, from my end of things, you can check out the show at theinstance.net. And as always, frogpants.com has got all kinds of other stuff, including other shows like this. If you are interested in the pantheon of podcasts available there, well, gosh darn it, it's it's time to go check it out. Um, I also do some video game streams and some other stuff right here at frogpants.tv. So you can check that schedule there. Uh, that's it. Instant show on Twitter. Garrett Art, of course, on Twitter. You can also find Patrick at not Patrick. 
And as always, uh, what else? Is that all? That's it. That's everything. We haven't heard from Terpster in a while, but he's been busy. Busy, busy boy. Maybe we'll get some kind of lore thing happening soon. We'll do a little side thing. And then new Chris Metzen episode coming up soon as well. So watch for that. That's going to do it for us, for me, for Patrick, and for Garrett. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. See you. And...